Yeah, Carter, I'm on my way. Uh, yeah, I know. No, I, no, I, I just had a little problem, so I'll... Yeah, okay, okay, I'm right there. Girl, okay, this time I really am out of here. My collection of Motown albums. I wouldn't swap them for CDs for all the gold in the world. I think it's high time to change the tube. Guy, you know that? like she's soaking, and I know what's bothering her. Go back to bed, Sam. You're gonna catch a death of cold like that. I'm not cold. Oh, look, Sam, please don't start. I got no intention of dying today. I'm sick of living in fear like this. Every morning I'm, I'm terrified that something's gonna happen to you. I know how you feel, Sam. You just need some time, that's all. I don't like to see you like this. You know that, baby. Well, what if you quit? We could move to Florida and take over my parents' store. We'd have a normal life. We could have a baby. 
I'm just not made for that kind of life, Sam. I've been around too much violence all my life to go live some kind of normal life like that. I know you love me, babe. So try to understand me, too. Hi, Tyler. Oh, uh, Carl is looking for you. Yeah, I know. So, you ready for retirement, man? Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on it. Hey, Tyler, what do you know? Just the guy I was looking for. You remember that hundred bucks I loaned you about six months ago? I'd really like for you to get that back to me as soon as possible. Like maybe now, for example? Jeffrey, don't tell me you're prepared to ruin a beautiful friendship for a hundred lousy dollars. This may surprise you, but yes. So give up the cash before I start to get really angry. Yo, let me make you a deal. I'll play you a game of b-ball for your hundred bucks. If you win, I'll give you two hundred bucks right then. But if you lose, we cool. You'll give me two hundred bucks if I win. You got my word, man. All right, you're on. But don't even think about not paying me if you lose, because that... Don't worry, Jeffrey. I'll come by and see you when I get five minutes. Let it crawl. The waitress hasn't come in yet? She won't be long. Garrett got the lab results. Shall we go? All right, let me hang up my coat. I'll be right with you. Okay. See you in a minute.
So, what do you want to start with? What did you find on the knife? Got some good prints off it. They matched those found on the fork and glass at the suspect's table. So, the murderer was definitely at that table. Anything on the blade? I'm getting to that. We definitely had blood from the victim, but the weird thing is we also found blood from the killer. What about the pool of blood in the stall? You're not going to believe this. The blood wasn't from the victim, it was from the killer. What was he doing bleeding in the stall? I have absolutely no idea. Were there any prints on the book that was under the table? Yep, and they matched the ones on the fork and the glass. So it was definitely his book. It looked like a fairly old book. Maybe we can get some more stuff out of it. Did you find anything on the coffee cup? The only prints we found belonged to the waitress. That's impossible, man. That cup was half empty. Somebody must have drank it. So, what do you think about all that? I don't have any explanation for the blood in the stall. The victim could have wounded the killer during a struggle, but it doesn't make sense that it would be in the stall. It's as though the killer wounded himself. Hey, why not? You get clumsy fools in every other profession. Why not killers? That's kind of a flimsy explanation, Garrett. To each his own, Carla. I do the testing, you figure out the reason why. Thanks for your help, Garrett. See you later. So, what do we do now? You go take care of the composite. I'm gonna go check with the coroner and see if he got anything from the body. Okay. Catch you later. When Marcus and I were kids, we were inseparable. He's the one who took care of me after our parents died. We kind of grew apart after he became a priest. But he's still the only person I really trust. The only one who might believe that I had nothing to do with all this mess. I'm happy to see you. I missed you. It's been a while. Two years. So tell me what's happened, Lucas. I've killed a man, Marcus. It happened in a restaurant last night. It's like I was possessed in a sort of trance, like I was a puppet on a string. I saw what I was doing, but I was powerless to stop it. My God. I can't believe this, Lucas. Tell me that it wasn't you. You're not capable of something like that. And there's this, too. You cut your wrists? Before the murder, I, I carved these symbols on my arms with a knife. I don't know if they mean anything. This... Murder? I exactly how did it happen? Well, after work last night, I stopped at a little diner to get something to eat. I read a book at my table, I think. And after, it's just a black hole. I don't remember anything. Right up until I found myself in the toilets with a knife in my hand. It, it, was, it was horrible. Were there any witnesses? Did anyone see you? Probably. I got out of the restaurant as best I could. The police still haven't identified me, apparently, but it probably won't take them too long to track me down. Had you been drinking or taking drugs? You know that I don't do that, Marcus. While I was doing this horrible thing, I saw something, or, or rather someone. Was somebody else there with you? No, it was, it was like a sort of vision. I saw a man in the middle of hundreds of candles. And, and there was this little girl. There's something else you need to know. I know this sounds crazy, but after the murder, I, I had these premonitions, like I was seeing things that hadn't happened yet. What happened to me, Marcus? What am I supposed to do now? You know me better than anyone, Marcus. Help me. Listen, Lucas, I... I'm a bit lost here. This whole story is just so bizarre. Maybe you need some professional help. Most cases of possession are known to actually stem from psychiatric... Marcus, I don't have a psychiatric problem. I'm not crazy. I am a priest, Lucas. The fact that you have taken a life is a very serious matter. I told you that it wasn't me, Marcus. All these years and nothing's changed. You still never listen to me. Lucas... Don't ask me to make a choice between my faith and my brother. I'm not a murderer, Marcus. 
You're the only person I can trust. I'm just asking you to believe me. Very well. I'll do whatever I can for you, but I can't do anything that goes against my beliefs. Look, I, I need to get some answers. I'll, I'll call you. Here. You need this more than I do. Marcus, you know that I don't believe in all that. Thanks. something the cop will recognize me. What am I gonna do? Patrol 324, kid just fell into the water. Send an ambulance right away. Man, what courage. The kid would have died. That guy's a hero. He dove into freezing water to save the kid. The kid never would have made it out of there without him. The cop recognized me. We both knew it. It's hard to say why he didn't turn me in. Maybe he decided I was even. I had taken a life and given one back. Nothing really changed for me. I was still wanted for murder by the police. But when I left that park, I knew I could look myself in the mirror again without cringing. Come in. H Hello, Detective. Hello, Mrs. Morrison. Uh, thanks for taking the trouble to come down. Please, take a seat. Now, we're going to try and assemble a composite photo of the suspect you saw. We have a computer program to help us. You'll see, it's really simple. It's kind of like a video game. Have you ever played a video game, Mrs. Morrison? No. Ah, it doesn't matter. You're going to do fine. The most important thing is to try to remember exactly what happened. The program consists of several types of facial features. You scroll through them until it looks like the man you saw. You understand? Yes. Well, I think I do. Okay. Let's go.
Now, is this the face of the person you saw? Yes. At least, th that's how I remember him. Thank you very much for your help. We're gonna get this picture out to all the airports, trains, and bus stations, and to all of our patrolmen. If this guy is still in New York, we're gonna find him. And go buy yourself a video game. Okay, we're going to get started. Uh, if you prefer, you can wait outside. I'd rather stay here if you don't mind. I've studied some medicine. I've seen dead bodies. Oh. As you wish. No apparent hematoma on the body. Two broken fingernails on the right hand. Large hematoma on the back of the cranium. A uh, mm, fracture of the occipital bone. He cracked his head when he fell. Abnormal dilation in um, both pupils. Why are his pupils dilated? What did he see before he died? Three knife wounds between the third and fifth ribs in the proximity of the heart. Uh, the blade was driven in deeply. Uh, the stabs seem to have been delivered from the front and moved from left to right. The murderer was left hand. One stab neatly cut the aorta. And the other two cut the left and right coronary arteries. Oh, he really didn't have a chance. The blade slipped right through the ribs to cut the arteries. Do you think it was just by chance? Hmm. Difficult to say. The chances of cutting all three main arteries to the heart with three lucky stabs are fairly small, but um, it's not impossible. Do you think the killer had some knowledge of anatomy? It's not impossible, but I doubt that someone who understood human anatomy would do this. You'd really have to be deranged to want to provoke a slow and agonizing death in this manner. I uh, saw a case like this once before. It was a while back now, in the 90s, I think. Exactly the same. Three stabs around the heart, each one cutting a main artery. It really struck me at the time. I wondered how such a thing were possible. It was the, um, what was that name again? Karsten or Kirsten, something like that. Kirsten? Yes, that's it, Kirsten. You know about that case? Not yet, but I'm sure as hell gonna find out. My body seemed to be fighting against something, but I still didn't know what. 